In this lecture, we will look at Quine's attempt to attack the analytic synthetic distinction. To say that the analytic synthetic distinction doesn't exist is a bold claim. The analytic synthetic distinction is a distinction we seem to have an intuitive grasp of. Analytic statements are roughly those statements that are true just by the meanings of the terms in the statement, whereas synthetic statements require some matter of fact apart from the meanings of the terms. For example, the statement, all bachelors are unmarried, is analytic, whereas most bachelors are young, is synthetic. The first statement is true just by the meaning of bachelor, whereas the truth of the second statement requires looking at the world. We seem to understand the distinction perfectly fine. However, we will look at two arguments that Quine gives against the existence of the analytic synthetic distinction. Along the way, we will encounter some troubling ideas of Quine that will seriously make you question whether any distinctions exist. The first argument Quine gives is that the analytic synthetic distinction is circular. Here is the argument. The circularity argument. Premise 1. The notion of analyticity depends on the notion of synonymy. Premise 2. The notion of synonymy depends on the notion of analyticity. Conclusion. Therefore, the notion of analyticity is circular. Premise 3. If a notion is circular, then it doesn't exist. Conclusion. The analytic synthetic distinction doesn't exist. Before considering the first two premises, let's look at premise 3. One might doubt whether circularity entails non-existence. For instance, consider the notion of identity. We might say that two things are identical if they are not different, and that they are different if they are not identical, so that the notion of identity depends on the notion of difference, and the notion of difference depends on the notion of identity. In such a case, the identity difference distinction would be circular. But we wouldn't deny that the distinction exists, on the other hand, one could try to define the notion of identity first and then take difference to mean the negation of identity. Similarly, one could take identity as a primitive notion and take difference to mean the negation of identity. In any case, circularity is a bad thing and we'd like to avoid it if possible. For our purposes, we'll accept premise 3 that circular notions don't exist. According to Quine, premise 1 is plausible. Consider all and only bachelors are unmarried men. This statement is analytic because bachelor just means unmarried man. The statement is true by virtue of the synonymy between bachelor and unmarried man. Analytic statements are statements that are true by virtue of the meanings of terms and independently of matters of fact. So the notion of analyticity depends on the notion of synonymy. Premise 2, according to Quine, is also plausible because to say that bachelor and unmarried man are synonymous amounts to saying that all and only bachelors are unmarried men is analytic. What Quine has in mind here is that the statement all and only bachelors are unmarried men must not only be true but must be necessarily true. And this notion of necessarily true is the same notion as analytic. The terms bachelor and unmarried man are synonymous because the statement all and only bachelors are unmarried men is analytic. So the notion of synonymy depends on the notion of analyticity. 
I agree with premise one. An analytic statement is a statement that is true by virtue of the meanings of the terms and independently of matters of fact. So to determine if a statement is analytic, we just look at the terms and determine whether the statement is true in virtue of the meanings of those terms. In doing so, we will find that two terms are synonymous. I don't agree with premise two. I don't agree with Quine that the notion of synonymy rests on the notion of analyticity. For example, consider the statement, a prime number p is divisible only by one and p. I take this statement to be true in virtue of the meaning of prime number. A prime number is a number divisible only by one and itself. I wouldn't say that the term prime is synonymous with divisible only by one and itself because a prime number is divisible only by one and itself is necessarily true, even though it is necessarily true. Rather, the statement is necessarily true because prime is synonymous with divisible only by one and itself. Quine is redefining the notion of analyticity as necessary truth and claiming that the notion of synonymy rests on the notion of necessary truth. However, this claim is mistaken, as we've seen with the term prime. To give an alternative example, suppose we define the number 2 as 1 plus 1. Then the statement 2 is 1 plus 1 is necessarily true, but this fact is not the reason why 2 is synonymous with 1 plus 1. The reason why 2 is synonymous with 1 plus 1 is because that's how 2 is defined. In a similar way, bachelor just means unmarried man. Just as the community of mathematicians defines a prime number as a number divisible only by one and itself, so a community of speakers defines bachelor to be unmarried man. However, Quine thinks that we can't check a dictionary to find that bachelor and unmarried man are synonyms, for the lexicographer empirically finds that speakers use the term synonymously. Quine thinks that definition, in such a case, rests on synonymy rather than explaining it. The picture Quine gives us is of a community of speakers that uses two terms synonymously, and it is an empirical discovery that this is so. To find that bachelor and unmarried man are used synonymously in a community of speakers is like finding that water is made of H2O and the lexicographer simply records his findings. I agree with Quine that sometimes two terms are used synonymously prior to an explicit definition, and that the definition comes after an empirical discovery. However, this is compatible with the claim that once an explicit definition is provided, the two terms are synonymous because of the definition and not because of the necessary truth of the associated statement. The way bachelor is defined is certainly not as clear and simple as the way prime is defined by mathematicians. However, the difference is not that great. Imagine that initially there were two definitions of prime floating around in usage among the mathematical community. One set of mathematicians included one as a prime, and the other set did not include one as a prime. Now, suppose that over time, one of the definitions died out, so that almost every mathematician did not include one as a prime. Then, we could say that one is not a prime is an analytic statement. The statement is true in virtue of the definition of prime. This is all compatible with the claim that the community of mathematicians uses prime and divisible only by one and itself and not equal to one synonymously and that we can empirically discover this. We still have the explicit definition of prime and this explicit definition is what makes the statement 
one is not a prime, an analytic statement. Imagine a similar situation for bachelor. Perhaps in the past, people used the term to mean unmarried man. Perhaps some others used it to mean single man. The community of speakers could explicitly decide on a definition of bachelor as unmarried male. Some of the older uses of bachelor may have died out. It would now be the case that all and only bachelors are unmarried men is an analytic truth. The statement is true in virtue of the definition of bachelor, not because the statement is necessarily true. The second argument Quine gives against the analytic synthetic distinction is the argument from confirmation holism. Confirmation holism is the view that the confirmation or disconfirmation of a statement is considered in light of the whole body of knowledge within which that statement is embedded. Think of the statement, one is a prime. Perhaps some group of mathematicians at some time took it to be an analytic truth. Then, later on, one was no longer included as a prime in light of the broader body of mathematical knowledge and practice, and the statement became false under the new definition. Given that statements are confirmed or disconfirmed in light of collective wholes of statements, there are no unrevisable statements. All statements are revisable. Here is the argument. The argument from confirmation holism. Premise 1. Confirmation holism is true. Premise 2. If confirmation holism is true, then the analytic synthetic distinction is illusory. Conclusion. Therefore, the analytic synthetic distinction is illusory. Premise 2 is true for Quine because analytic statements are unrevisable. They are confirmed, come what may. Since confirmation holism entails that there are no unrevisable statements, it entails that there are no analytic statements. Therefore, the analytic synthetic distinction is illusory. I agree with premise 2, but I disagree with premise 1. There are statements which are true by definition. For example, bachelors are single men, under the definition of bachelor as single man. And one is a prime, under the definition of prime, as divisible only by one and itself. There isn't anything in experience that will confirm or disconfirm these statements. It might be that the definitions of bachelor or prime get changed so that the statements under the new definitions are no longer true. However, it's not that these statements are disconfirmed by some empirical fact or by some theoretical desideratum. The statement, bachelors are single men, is true under one definition of bachelor and false under another definition of bachelor. The truth value of the statement under the definition of bachelor as single male is true. The truth value of the statement under the definition of bachelor as unmarried male is false, since some unmarried males may not be single. The truth value of the statement under the first definition of bachelor did not go from true to false, rather it remained the same. Similarly, the statement one is a prime is true under one definition of prime and false under another definition of prime. The truth value of the statement under the definition of prime as divisible only by one and itself is true. The truth value of the statement under the definition of prime as divisible only by one and itself and not equal to one is false. The truth value of the statement under the first definition of prime did not go from true to false, rather it remained the same. 
Conclusion In this lecture, we've looked at Quine's two arguments against the existence of the analytic synthetic distinction and have seen that they both fail. The circularity argument fails because, although the notion of analyticity depends on the notion of synonymy, the notion of synonymy does not depend on the notion of analyticity. Two terms are synonymous in virtue of an explicit definition. The argument from confirmation holism fails because confirmation holism is not true. There are unrevisable statements, namely statements which are true by definition.